Okay, perfect. And we are back online. Thank you for your patience. Sorry for running a little behind schedule today. Um, we're having the last session on the topic of type education this morning. Before starting, um, a few announcements. I have a few bad news and good news. Um, the bad news is that unfortunately the round table on type education which, would, which was supposed to happen in this room didn't come together. The good news is that we normally should have Adam Twardock of FontLab giving us the privilege of demoing FontLab Studio to us at 12.30. Ish. Or <laughs> ish, exactly. Um, another uh, a good news and a bad news. The good news, <laughs> we have um, a type critique organized tomorrow on lunchtime, so between 1 and 3. We'll have actually three of those sessions in French, Spanish, and English. That's the good news. The bad news, we have only six spots for each. So if you'd like to have your work reviewed and critiqued by world-class designers, make sure you register at the welcome desk. Um, this morning's session is a bit uh, dear to my heart because I have the privilege of introducing Hugues Gentil and Martin Brendecke from ESAT Type in Amiens, a class I've been teaching in the past. Um, it's lovely to have them here and tell us about how they um, uh, appropriate an approach in type design education and especially around type revivals or un-type revivals. Um, I hope they'll tell us everything about it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jean-Baptiste, for the introduction. Thank you all for being here. Um, so my name is Hugues Gentil. Uh, I teach type design at ESAT Type. Um, so ESAT Type is a world famous international postgraduate course uh, located in Amiens, France, in um, the Ecole Supérieure d'Art et de Design. Um, so we decided to, uh, like, to kind of celebrate the 15 years of existence of the course with a new collaborative project uh, called This Is Not a Revival. Um, and I guess most of you um, um, ha had already a taste of it in your goodie bag from the um, ASAP I. Um, and this is actually um, is a type 2224, um, a br brilliant group of people. Um, and with my teaching colleagues, um, Patrick Dohan, Sébastien Morligem, um, and Hélène Marion, we invited those students to jump into this new project. Um, and after the, the very first exercise, we, um, which, is a, which was a revival, we wanted them to explore a different way to approach typographic history. Um, so the main idea was to settle into um, a very specific time around uh, 1830, 1845, uh, and, and a place, so France. Um, and to research, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> and to research yeah, several kind of le uh, se several kind of letter forms, but everything but type, uh, because the most interesting design at this period uh, were not really coming from type foundries. So we suggested three categories um, to explore, uh, like big shop posters. Um, small heads in newspapers, and also sheet music, posters, and booklet covers. And in this example, uh, especially, there are many styles combined together, some based on calligraphic uh, models, some um, possibly derived from, um, from British typefaces, and some invented by um, unclean like uh, lithographers. Um, and from there, I will, um, I will let Martin present the outcome of this project. So, thank you. Thanks, everybody. And thanks, Hugh. And thanks, Jean-Baptiste. Uh, so I'm going to speak on behalf of myself and also on behalf of my four colleagues. Would you guys please raise your hands so everybody can see who you are? Yeah. 
and just for efficiency's sake, I've been elected uh, speaker of my class, so I'm going to do my best to represent my work as well as theirs. When uh, I, starting with my project, when I got the brief, uh, each one of us could study whichever was on these genres of lithography and printing, whatever we wanted to do, as long as it was interesting. When I got the brief, uh, I, of course the display lettering was neat, but it was just too much. It was too rich for my taste. So I gravitated towards these skinny caption letters. As a style, they're almost everywhere, uh, especially on sheet music covers. As a musician, I thought the music covers were lovely. Uh, they're usually condensed, mono weight, lightweight, and feature some funny uh, adaptations to the small scale of lithographic caption lettering. The first step after gathering our sources was to do an experimental workshop with Hélène Marien. And during the workshop, the, the idea was really to recreate the uh, environment that these letters were drawn in, and not to reproduce the letters themselves. Even though the title of the project was not a revival, most of us still had no idea what that meant. In my case, uh, it meant a two-phase approach. And the first phase was smaller, smaller, smaller. I started with a ballpoint pen at four millimeter X height and took it down to a one millimeter X height. That wasn't weird enough, so I tried scratching the letters on the back of a piece of carbon paper. That started to get more interesting. So the second phase of my experimentation was wider, wider, wider. And I took the letters, uh, stretched them until I could fit three to a line, if that. And this uh, introduced a radical distortion of the letter form that I wouldn't have done otherwise. Uh, still, that was a little too easy. So I was asked to scratch the letters into a transparent plastic sheet, forcing me to uh, lose sight of what I was doing and also lose control over the letter forms. Uh, if any of you were wondering where that logo came from on the first slide, this is it. It was an accident. Uh, and when it was impossible to see with the letters I was drawing on this plastic sheet, we had to preview them with a light or by uh, rubbing some ink on it. And the light had uh, the effect of producing these cool projections that could be a whole project in and of themselves. Anyway, I took these skeletal letter forms and built them out with a speedball nib, even adding contrast. Um, it, this had the effect of closing or drastically reducing the counter shapes. And at this point, I had everything I needed to digitize the typeface and add something quite different. Uh, the, when I digitized this uh, heavy, ultra-wide, high contrast letters, they, they looked terrible in, in text. I could only fit three to a, a line. I couldn't write a whole word. I, I took out the counters, and that made things more interesting. The, the letters looked much more solid without counters. Uh, from there, I went far and wide. I must have done 20 different iterations on this. Uh, skinny, wide, different contrasts, no contrast. Uh, I tried everything, even made a cool sans serif version. And, but really, the, there was something about this interplay between the letters without the counters. It was all about the interletter spacing. And that really caught my eye. Still terrible to use in a layout. So I started stacking them on posters, and that's when I found my solution. This wasn't even a horizontal typeface. It was a vertical typeface. I threw away the capitals, and then I started having fun. Or I threw away the lowercase, keeping only the capitals, and that was the fun part. I have uh, three solutions, or three answers to this question, let's say. The first is uh, lightweight, monolinear, and ultra-wide, monospaced, vertical typeface. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> and uh, this is perhaps the closest to the source, where I basically took these caption letters and turned them on their side uh, in terms of form. This is uh, a heavyweight, ultra-wide, monospaced, blah, 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 that uh, it takes the same structure and reduces the identifiable shape down into a small proportion of the surface area. Uh, again, focusing on the inner letter shapes and uh, taking it to the extreme, a sans serif version, where I just tried to use the smallest amount of information possible to identify each letter. Great for uh, maybe a sci-fi Old West wanted sign. Uh, also works in a set of cadenced widths, uh, which was very fun to play around with and creates a solid block of text on the screen. Try reading that. 
Um, this was not used for the A-type I branding. And it's not a revival either. One of my favorite project names. So like me, uh, my colleague Chuck uh, was interested in the caption lettering because uh, display lettering is maybe too obviously interesting and too obviously overdone. Uh, but unlike me, Chuck started with uh, heavily slanted script caption lettering. And these are also quite common and maybe more iconic of the specific uh, lithography uh, lettering style. Heavy slant, horizontal features, long serifs that balance out the extreme slant. Really a horizontal rhythm, which is uncommon in a script lettering. Uh, Trick also started with a monolinear tool, but uh, unlike me, uh, she wasn't just focusing on the size. She was focusing more on speed and speed to distort the letters. So she went faster and faster and faster until more angular and bizarre shapes started showing up. She also tried experimenting with the plastic sheet. It wasn't as useful for her as it was for me, but it still produced some amazing projection results that uh, we all had fun playing around with. Again, this could be a whole project in and of itself. Once she had some original constructions uh, with a monolinear contrast, she uh, bumped up the X height uh, and used a broad nib uh, with a uh, horizontal stress to uh, see if that could distort the letter forms even further, and it did. Uh, piling up the strokes in a small X height forced her to come up with some really original solutions for letters like S and G and Y. And uh, letters like E and X were incredibly hard to write with a broad nib pen uh, with uh, horizontal emphasis on such a small X height. This is uh, anywhere between three and eight millimeters. And uh, it, it really helped crystallize the ductus by forcing the contrast into a small X height. From there, she traced it with a, a large felt tip marker to come up with an angular 45 degree angle slant script typeface. How cool is that? Um, but she didn't stop there. She went on to make a set of different versions on this, uh, playing with width, weight, features, softness, and uh, really going back and forth in between these three.